Hello and welcome to Droix. Today we are checking out some emulators performance on the INEO 2021 Pro. A quick note beforehand, we have not spent any time tweaking emulators to squeeze out some extra frames per second. This is more of an out of the box experience which you can get simply by running the emulator, setting up the controls and loading a game. We are using the iSpace default TDP settings with the custom one set to 28 watts. With that said, we are starting off with the Dolphin emulator and Burnout 2. Ignore the widescreen flickering, it's the emulator and not the display. The system works fine and you can play many games on 11 watts. There were a few games that required 20 watts for smooth frame rates, but overall you should not have any issues at all. At a YouTube commenter's request, we are trying the Sega Saturn, which runs absolutely fine at 11 watts. You probably could go a little bit lower if you wanted to. I'm running this through the RetroArch and Kronos, and provided the emulator supports the game, you should be fine playing Saturn games. Moving up a generation to the PlayStation 1. Again, you can run most of the games on 11 watts and possibly lower, or you could increase the rendering resolution and graphics quality and keep it at 11 or 15 watts. The Sega Dreamcast runs perfectly on the INEO Pro. I tried various different games and they all seem to run fine at 11 watts with no issues. You should be able to increase the quality and use 15 watts TDP and not have to worry about frame drops. Next up we are playing what I'm guessing is called Desmoomi and we are playing Geometry Wars. Like all the previous systems you can run this between 11 and 15 watts and have no problems whilst playing. Now we move on to the next generation of consoles. The Xbox emulator CXBX Reloaded is still very much in development and games compatibility can change between updates. Mashed seems to be having some issues on this latest build with frame rates dropping to mid 40s even at 28 watts. Usually it should be running closer to full speed but it is what it is. The classic PlayStation 2 is next and there's no better way to start than with Gran Turismo 3. It runs great on the Iron Neo Pro at 11 watts but 15 should make it perfect as there were very minor frame drops here and there. And with 15 watts you could also make a few graphics improvements in the settings. On Outrun Coast to Coast it required a bit more juice to get to smooth 60 frames. 15 watts was given varying frames and if you set it to 20 the game runs great. Next we have the PSP and everyone's go to performance checking game, it's God of War. I was getting some occasional dips in frame rate on 11 watts. 15 watts seems to keep it stable at 60 frames per second. You could if you wanted to increase to 20 and get some graphics tweaks going for better quality visuals. From one handheld to another, we are first trying Sonic Generations. It doesn't run great at 20 watts and bumping it up to 28 does not make that much of a difference with frame rates around the mid 40s to 50s. Trying a less demanding game does however make a massive difference. Cave Story Plus runs great at 15 watts and we played it with no issues at all. For this console system it really does depend on what game you're playing for how it performs on the Iron Neo Pro. On to the PlayStation 3 now. It's another emulator that is in active development and the performance and compatibility can change between releases. Escape 3 actually runs fairly well considering. I was getting between 20 and 30 frames per second depending on the scene in the game. Changing the TDP did not seem to make a massive difference in performance for this however. Meanwhile on DuckTales Remastered the game plays flawlessly at 60 frames per second on 11 watts. 
so it's another system where it does depend on the game and how compatible it is for its performance. Up next is the Xbox 360 emulator Xenia. Again, this is in active development and compatibility can change between releases. We are trying Sonic Transformed on 20 watts and are getting around 20 frames per second. Increasing the TDP to 28 gets us in the area of 25 frames per second. It's pretty good considering the console and the stage of the emulator's development. For more basic games you should be able to get a more playable experience. We finish off with a few games on the Ryu Jinx emulator. Starting with Cruising Blast which is a fairly new game. On 20 watts TDP we are getting anything from 20 to 45 frames per second. I think the shader caches are still generated on the fly when first playing a game. If so, then you can expect future plays to be a bit smoother. Raising the TDP to 28 watts improves the frame rate to more in the 50s area. Sonic Mania plays well at 20 watts with very minor dips now and again. At 28 it plays very well and you should have no issues at all. And to finish up we take a quick look at Wonderboy the Dragon's Trap. I am playing this on just 11 watts and there's some very minor frame drops. You can bump it up to 15 and it plays just fine. Again with the Ryojix emulator, like many that are in active development, it will depend on what game you're playing and how well it performs. So overall the Ion Neo Pro is very good for emulation in my opinion. It can play many systems up to the more recent ones including some games on current generation handhelds. I am more of a retro gamer than modern consoling so the Ion Neo Pro is more than capable of playing everything up to the PlayStation and Dreamcast era. On the more modern systems you definitely can spend some time tweaking the console's emulators for things such as internal resolution, frame skipping and so on to squeeze a few more FPS out of the emulators if you wanted to. That wraps up our look at a bunch of emulators on the Ion Neo Pro, we hope you have found it useful. Don't forget to subscribe to keep up to date with our latest videos. Thanks for watching and we hope to see you back in our next video.